All right, today we are going to read To the Top of Everest by Samantha Larson. Here's some background information. Mount Everest is the highest mountain in the world, rising approximately 29,000 feet above sea level. It is part of the Asian mountain range called the Himalayas and is located on the border between Nepal and Tibet. Tibetans refer to the mountain as Chumalunga, or Mother Goddess of the Earth. In 1953, Sir Edmund Hillary of New Zealand and Sherpa Tenzing Norgay of Nepal became the first people to reach Mount Everest summit. Sherpas are an ethnic group that is native to the highest regions in Nepal and are known for their abilities in mountaineering. Sherpas are still valued today for their key role in successful attempts to climb Mount Everest. So people are trying to reach Mount Everest summits, summit. So that means the top of Mount Everest. And a Sherpa is kind of like these people who are, are mountaineering, they're trying to get up there. The Sherpas are like their guides. They're going to help them get to the top. They're very good at what they do. All right, so this is her blog entry, and we're going to see that her blogs kind of go um, a little bit in order. There's a section where she goes back in time a little bit. So let's read her blog. So this is Friday, March 30th, 2007. Here we go, Kathmandu. Today is the day. Our bags are nearly packed and we're just about ready to go. I've got 11 hours to run around doing last minute errands before our plane takes off. I arrived back in Long Beach from New York last Saturday. So she's from New York. She's going back to Long Beach where I've been since our return from Choi Oi, Choi Oyu. When I wasn't training by running, swimming at the pool, taking dance classes or rock climbing, I was taking oboe lessons, French and photography classes. Hopefully I'll be able to take some great pictures on this expedition. So we know that she's telling us this is in order to, to go on this expedition to climb Mount Everest, you need to have a lot of training for this expedition. Okay, a lot of training for an expedition. And in our last in our last discussions that we've had in the text that we've been reading, we've learned that an expedition is a journey. It has been a very exciting week in all of our general trip preparation mayhem, filled with lots of gear sorting and FedEx package arrivals. But now my dad and I are pretty much all set to go. See you in Kathmandu. Monday, April 2nd, 2007, Kathmandu. After nearly 24 hours of travel, we finally arrived in Kathmandu yesterday afternoon. Doug, my dad, and I met up with the rest of the team, Victor, James, and Wim, at our hotel in Kathmandu. So we can see there are five people on this team. We had a group meeting where we went over the route we are going to take to base camp, and then we picked up some odds and ends at one of the dozens of local climbing stores. The team is flying to Lukla to begin the trek to base camp early tomorrow morning. And if we look at trek, trek is a long journey on foot, so they're not going to be taking a car, they're, and they're not going to be taking a train, a bus, they're going to be walking this. Wednesday, April 4th, 2007, Namchi Bazaar. Yesterday, after a very specific, after a very scenic flight and a heart-stopping landing on a small airstrip perched on the side of the mountain, we arrived in Lukla to begin the trek to base camp. Lukla was filled with excitement as porters organized their loads and trekkers began their journeys, their travel. From Lukla, we hiked for about four hours through the beautiful Nepalese countryside, passing through several villages until we reached the village of Manjo, where we stayed that night with the, in the Manjo guest house. I think my dad and I got the, got the big sleep that we needed to catch up on our jet log. Around four in the afternoon, we decided to take a nap that lasted until seven the next morning. So if any of you have ever traveled somewhere really, really far away, you might have experienced jet lag. And that's the extreme tiredness that we feel when we're traveling across different time zones. We get very, very tired. So they're trying to, to, to catch up, get some extra sleep. Thursday, April 12th, 2007, base camp. 
We made it to base camp yesterday afternoon. Today, we are going to practice crossing the ladders over the Kom Kom Kombu Icefall. We are well and safe. And the Kombu Icefall, that is ice from a glacier. So this could be a very dangerous place to cross. So that's why they're going to be practicing this. En route here, we visited Lama Gesa and he blessed our journey. It was an amazing experience. So Lama Gesa is not a llama, okay? It is a blesser of Everest climbers. So kind of like this guy and he's like, okay, you know, climb, we, climbing Mount Everest can be very dangerous. A lot of people die up here. Um, you could get hurt. So I'm going to give you my blessing and hope that you have some good luck and hope you can come back um, successful. So that's what he does. I am going to try and connect my laptop and charge it with my solar charger. We will see if that works. More to follow. Monday, April 16, 2007, rest day. Yesterday, we got an early start for our first time through the ice fall. We left around 6.30 in the morning with the idea that we would turn around 11. We did not necessarily have a destination in mind or a place in mind. It was more for acclimatization. And to get an idea of what the ice fall was like. However, at 11, we were about half an hour from the top of the ice fall, so we decided to just continue to the top. So I'm gonna go back over here for a second. So acclimatization, this is like adjusting. So if we look over here, there's a little footnote. So that's the process of allowing the body to adjust to the climate. So when, you, um, when you're climbing Mount Everest, you can't simply go from the bottom straight to the top. You would get very sick and you could die. You actually have to climb in stages Okay, so you climb up a little bit, then you have to climb back down, and then you go back up a little bit more, you got to go back down. And so eventually you do this, this process over and over, and so it adjusts your body to how thin the air is at the top so that you, you can kind of, um, your body can take it better. Because again, if I were to simply go from the bottom to the top, I'd get very sick and I could potentially die. So you're trying to adjust your body, you're trying to acclimate. It was quite fun climbing up the ice wall. The ladders that we had to cross over crevices or crevasses were especially exciting. I, I was pretty tired by the time we got back to base camp, but today was a rest day, our first, so I had plenty of time to recover. And if we look here, we have a footnote for number two, footnote two. And if we look down here, we can see that a crevasse is a deep crack in the ice or glacier. Okay, it's a deep crack in the ice. And sometimes these uh, crevasses can be a couple feet, some that sometimes they can be, you know, 10, 20 feet, sometimes they can be over 100 feet. So these are very, very dangerous to cross over. Tomorrow we are going up to Camp One to spend the night. Camp One is about an hour further than when we, than we went yesterday. The next day we will go up to tag camp two and then come back down to base camp. Thursday, April 19th, 2007, Puja. The day before yesterday, we all made it up to camp one to spend the night. This time we were able to get through the Kumba Icefall an hour quicker than the last. We had a pretty good night at camp one. My dad and I both had a bit of a headache at first, but we were both able to eat and sleep well. So they kind of have a headache because they're at a very high altitude. They're very high up um, in the sky on this mountain. So that's why they're starting to get this headache. And that's why it's very important for them to, to acclimate and go through that process. If you look right here, I underlined the day before yesterday. So we see her blog entry is Thursday, April 19th, but she's telling us that this didn't happen on Thursday, April 19th. This happened the day before yesterday. So it actually happened on Tuesday, April 17th. She continues and um, we see that she is talking about yesterday. Okay, so that's going to be Wednesday, April 18th. Camp one is at the start of the Western CWM. And we see that there's another footnote. CWM is a valley at the base of Mount Everest. Um, so it's just at the start of that. Yesterday from camp one, we continued up the CWM to camp two. The CWM is infamous for being very uncomfortably hot, but yesterday it was actually really nice. 
It was very beautiful and we could see the summit of Everest, which we haven't been able to see since before we got to base camp. After we tagged camp two, we came all the way back down to base camp. It was an, a long day and we all returned pretty tired. However, it was nice to be back in base camp. And after dinner, we watched Mission Impossible 3 on Ben's laptop from the London Business School team. Unfortunately, the power ran out about halfway through, but I have been asked to charge my laptop so we can finish tonight. So here we see they're, um, they're going, they got to go to camp two on Wednesday, April 18th. Today, so again, this is the entry that she's making today, Thursday, April 19th. Today was the puja, which is a ceremony that the Sherpas organize. A Lama comes up and performs many chants to ask the mountain gods for permission to climb the mountain and to ask for protection. I had my ice axe and my crampons blessed in the ceremony. As part of the ceremony, they also put out long lines of prayer flags coming out from the stupa where the ceremony was performed. Afterwards, they passed out lots of yummy treats. So here is the puja. We have this Lama. It's not an animal. Okay, this Lama is a spiritual leader. So this person who's coming up to chant and in this ceremony, okay, the puja ceremony, he's going to ask for permission and protection and protection from the mountain gods. Okay, because remember, climbing Mount Everest is a very dangerous thing. So they're going to um, ask for permission and protection. She also had her ice axe blessed as well as her crampons. And we see there's another footnote here. Crampons are metal spikes for boots. So they really help out if, it's, if you're walking on ice so that you can stick to the ice. The metal kind of like digs into to the ice so you don't move. So she's having her ice axe blessed as well as her crampons so that her gear can kind of, um, you know, hopefully be more helpful to her now that they've been blessed. While we were... While we were up at camp one, the shower tent was set up here at base camp. It's just a little bucket of water with a hose attached to it, but definitely 15 minutes of heaven. So we see, you know, she's not really going to be having many showers. So having this 15 minutes in this little bucket with water is a luxury for her. Saturday, April 28th, 2007, base camp. We are back at base camp. We came down from Camp 2 yesterday and arrived just in time for lunch. We were delayed a bit in the morning because we were radioed from base camp that there was a break in the ice wall, and we didn't want to leave until we knew that the ice doctors had fixed up the route. As we came down, we found that the break was in a flat area known as the football field that we had previously designated as a safe area to take a little rest. And the whole shelf just collapsed. So here we see, you know, they thought this, this little place was going to be a safe place to rest, but it's not safe. There's falling ice. So if you see here, I underlined the whole shelf just clapped. This shelf of ice just fell down. It's gone. And they thought it was safe. So it's safe to say that people should never assume it's safe when you're climbing Mount Everest. Even though you might think it is, it's, you don't want to assume. Now that we have spent a night at Camp 3, we are done with the acclimatization process. We are going to take a few days for rest and recovery, and then we just wait for good weather to make a summit bid. We plan to go back down to, to Pengbushi tomorrow so we can really get a good rest at lower altitude before our summit attempt. So we see here that they're now done adjusting to climate. They've gone up, they've come back down, they went up again, came back down. So they're done with the adjusting and now they're just waiting for the good weather so that they can start their climb to the top. Here is what we have been up to these past few days. All right, so remember, she's writing this entry on April 28th. She's now going to talk to us about what happened the last few days, so the few days before April 28th. April 23rd. Yesterday, we all made it up to Camp 1 for the night. We were joined by Tori from the London Business School team because she wasn't feeling 100% when her team went up the day before. Today, we all came up to, to Camp 2. 
It was very hot coming up the CWM this time, and we all had heavy packs because we had to bring up what we had left at Camp One the last time we stayed there. It certainly made it a lot harder work. April 24th. Despite the fact that I caused us to get a later start than planned this morning, I had, particular, I had a particularly hard time getting out of my warm sleeping bag into the cold air. We accomplished our goal for the day. We went up the very first pitch of the Lost face and are now back at Camp 2 for the evening. April 26th. Yesterday, we went about halfway up the Lost face to Camp 3 to spend the night. This is a new record for my dad and me as our highest night ever. Camp 3 is, is at about 23,500 feet, and our previous highest height was at Camp 2 on Cho Aou, Aou at 23,000 feet. We arrived at Camp 3 around noon and then had a lot of time to kill in our tents, as it wasn't really safe to go more than five feet outside the tent without putting on crampons and clipping into fixed ropes. So if they leave this, these tents, it could be very dangerous. They really can't, they can't leave at all because they don't want to get hurt. They don't want to die. Thankfully, I had not yet reached a hypoxic level where I couldn't enjoy my book. All right, so we have another footnote here. So hypoxic, if we look at the bottom, is having too little oxygen. So she's saying, you know, I have not, I'm not, I have not gotten at a point yet where I don't have enough oxygen. So I don't have to really focus on the oxygen I'm breathing. I can actually focus on this book and I can enjoy it. Coming up the lowest face was a big, was a bit windy and some parts were pretty icy. It gets fairly steep, so I was glad to have my ascender, which slides up the rope, but not back down, so you can use it as a handhold to pull yourself up. So here we see one, two, three, these three entries. These are summaries of the last few days, okay? So remember, she's reminding us what happened. Now she's moving back on. Um, her last entry was, oops, sorry. Her last entry was April 28th. She gave us some summaries of the last few days, and now we're back on um, her regular journal entries, which is May 6th. Back from holiday. We're back at base camp from our little holiday down the mountain. And a holiday is not like Christmas or Easter. This is like a break. So we're back from our little break down the mountain. Now that we are back in base camp, we are just waiting till we can go for our summit attempt. The ropes are not yet fixed to the summit. Once the ropes are fixed, we hope there will soon be a good weather window. So they're hoping for some good weather so they can start their hike to the top. Friday, May 11, 2007, base camp. We're still at base camp. Hopefully we'll be able to go up soon though. We've tried to hold on to our fitness these past few days by doing some sort of activity each day. We've been ice climbing in the really neat cave near base camp, and we've also been on hikes up Pomori to Pomori base camp, and then up to camp one. Pomori is a 7,145 meter mountain near Everest. So they're still trying to stay active. They're not just sitting there in their tents. They're doing some more climbing. Saturday, May 12, 2007 still at base camp. It looks like we're going to be able to go up soon for our summit, for a summit attempt. Fingers crossed. We've gotten our oxygen masks and tested them out. I was able to get my oxygen saturation back up to 100% this morning. After I turned off the oxygen, I only had a few seconds of being at pseudo sea level before it went back down though. We're all getting a little restless hanging around base camp. So here she's showing us, you know, they're getting their oxygen masks. They're getting ready to go climb to the top because they need oxygen. Um, and she's saying she only had a few, she, she used her oxygen mask and she took it off and she only had a few seconds of being at artificial sea level. So pseudo means artificial. And then her oxygen level went back down. So she really needs this oxygen mask in order to make it to the top. Monday, May 14th, 2007, Camp 2. We finally started our summit push yesterday, making our way from base camp to Camp 2. We don't have internet access up here, but we were able to relay this information to our correspondents, those are the journalists, in New York via satellite phone. We're taking a rest day today and plan to press on tomorrow. If all goes well, we should summit on the 17th. 
Thursday, May 17th, 2007, Summit. We made it to the top. Now all we have to do is get back down. So if you look right here from May 17th to May 23rd, that is six days um, until her next update. Wednesday, May 23rd, 2007, back home. We've been in a big rush getting back home and I haven't been able to update for a while as I have not had internet access. So that's why it's taken her six days to write this next journal entry or blog entry. We woke up this morning at 16,000 feet in a village called Labouche, and this evening my dad and I arrived back at sea level in Long Beach. That's in California. The rest of the team are celebrating in Kathmandu. My dad and I skipped out on the celebration to make it back in time for my brother Ted's college graduation in New York. So her brother is going to be graduating in New York, and she wants to be there. The day after we summited, or we reached the top, we came down from the South Coal, Camp 4, to Camp 2. I was very tired at that point, but glad that we had all made it back safely lower on the mountain. It was amazing how after being to almost 30,000 feet, 20,000 foot Camp 2 felt like it was nearly at sea level. So she's able to breathe a little bit easier when she's at this lower um, elevation. The day after that, we came back down to base camp, where we received lots of warm hugs and congratulations. We only had one night back at base camp as the next day, the 20th, we packed up our bags and headed back, headed down the valley. Base camp had a strange, empty feeling. It was sad to leave my little tent that had been my home for the past two months. So this is, this is kind of crazy. Her journey, her expedition has taken her two months. My dad, Doug, Wim, and I were hoping to get a helicopter out of Labouche on the 21st to save a little time, but Victor and James decided to walk down to Lucklaw Airstrip to fly out to Kathmandu on the 23rd. However, even though we awoke on the 21st to a beautiful clear day in Labouche, apparently there were clouds lower down the valley, so the helicopter couldn't fly in until the 23rd either. So they really wanted to take the helicopter, but there were too many clouds, so they had to wait. It was kind of hard waiting those two days in Labouche. We were just an hour away from a hot shower and a big meal. If only those clouds would clear. Once the helicopter landed in Kathmandu, I was greeted by a mob of journalists and cameramen. I was so surprised. After nearly 20 hours of travel, my dad and I landed at LAX. That has a footnote. If we look down here, we can see that is Los Angeles International Airport. That is in California. California. So they landed at LAX and were greeted by my family and some more news people. Now we only have a few hours before we jump back on a plane to go to New York. I am very excited to see my mom and my brother though. Thank you everyone for all your wonderful comments and your support. So here we can see she's flying into LAX, but she's only got, you know, a couple more hours and then she's going to get back on the plane. She's going to go to New York to see her brother graduate. So this is her journey um, of her, ex her expedition to climb Mount Everest in her blog post. Okay, so this is Samantha Larson. Climbing Mount Everest. <laughs>